This is a Squeeze podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Good morning and welcome to Squiz Kids Today, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Tuesday, April 26. In Squiz Kids Today, crowds return for Anzac Day. Our special Anzac Day report from Canberra. The bears under the house and the hiker down the toilet. That's what's making news kids style. The Lowdown. After two years of scaled-back events because of COVID and lockdowns, Anzac Day commemorations returned with gusto yesterday as record numbers of Australians turned out at dawn services and marches all over the country to pay their respects. Yesterday marked 107 years since the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps stormed the beaches of Gallipoli, marking a moment in history, a moment of sacrifice that still resonates today. More than 18,000 people braved the morning chill of Canberra yesterday to attend the dawn service at the National War Memorial, while large crowds turned out to similar services in big cities and country towns all over the country. School leaders laid wreaths, school bands played the Aussie anthem, and soldiers who had fought for their country in various wars around the world marched proudly to remember their friends who had fallen in battle and never made it back home. Meanwhile, because kids were out in force with their families at Canberra's National War Memorial for the dawn service, we sent Squiz Kids' very own Amanda Bauer to Canberra to ask them why they believed it was important to get up before sunrise and brave the cold to commemorate Anzac Day. Keep listening at the end of this episode to hear that special report. And don't forget, if you want to know more about Anzac Day, be sure to dive into this week's Squiz Kids Shortcut, which goes into what happened on April 25, 1915, why we celebrate a battle that ended in defeat, and how Anzac Day has changed over the years. Available to our Squiz Kids for schools and Apple Podcast subscribers. Jump into a free trial subscription by searching Squiz Kids in Apple Podcasts or via squizkids.com.au. globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a new story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed at the bottom of a toilet in a national park in Washington state in the United States. Well, luckily we haven't landed at the bottom of the toilet, but a hiker has after she lost her mobile phone down the pit toilet and fell in while trying to recover it. A pit toilet is pretty much what it sounds like, a big hole in the ground over which a toilet seat is placed. Very popular when you go camping. When the hiker accidentally dropped her mobile, she tried to reach down and retrieve it only to fall in. Ew. Luckily, though she was stuck at the bottom of a pit toilet, she was stuck there with her mobile phone and managed to call emergency services to pull her out. I would have had about 25 showers straight after that. I wonder if she kept the phone. Animal Kingdom. And so to California in the United States we go, where a family living in a house near a forest was shocked to discover a family of bears hibernating underneath their house. For months during the cold winter, the family could hear what they described as a purring or snoring sound beneath their floorboards. They asked neighbours if they were hearing the same thing, but it was all quiet on the neighbours' front. It was only after the family called in the Bear League, which is a group of people dedicated to keeping bears safe, that the truth was revealed. No fewer than five black bears, a mummy bear and four cubs, had decided to hibernate under the house. The bears were safely coaxed out into the open, and the underneath of the house was sealed off, because... Seriously, how else would you sleep knowing you had five black bears underneath your bedroom floor? Yikes! Q&A call out. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you're probably aware that a federal election is just around the corner. A day late next month when all the big people in Australia trot off to their local polling booth and decide who will represent them in Canberra and who will be the next Prime Minister of Australia. 
There are two blokes hoping to win. The current Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, and the current opposition leader, Anthony Albanese. And just like the school captain elections at your school, each candidate will be spending the time between now and the election trying to convince voters why they are the one to vote for. Now, here at Squiz Kids, because we know it's a kid's world too, even if some adults often forget it, we've been in touch with both candidates, and both ScoMo and Albo have indicated they'd be happy to do a Squiz Kids Q&A, where they answer any questions that you send in. So, don't just sit there, get your thinking caps on. This is your chance to ask a question of the next leader of our country. You've got until Monday to send your questions to squizkids at thesquiz.com.au. Be sure to tell us your name, age, where you're from, and whether your question is for Mr Morrison or Mr Albanese. The ten best questions for each candidate will be selected and put to those candidates. Get cracking! Hey team, just a little housekeeping note. Tomorrow, when you tune into the podcast, it won't be me, but rather the very excellent Amanda Bauer that you'll hear. For the next little while, Amanda's going to be hosting the podcast on Wednesdays. So, be sure to make her feel welcome. And I'll see you back here on Thursday. No mucking around while I'm gone, you hear? Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. In which Australian city is the National War Memorial? That's right, it's in Canberra. Question number two. A family of what animals were hibernating underneath a house in California? That's right, they were black bears. Question number three. What did a hiker drop down a toilet and try to retrieve? Yeah, it was her mobile phone. Ooh. Shout out. It's April 26. Welcome back to school, everyone. Now, for some of you, it's your second week back. I hope it hasn't been too painful. For others, it's your first week back. Hope you have a good one. Today is the start of Food Allergy Awareness Week. Did you know that Australia has one of the highest incidences of people with food allergies in the world, with an estimated 800,000 Aussies affected? No doubt you know someone in your class or school. It's also a special day for Jem from Vermont South, who's celebrating a birthday today. And because a bunch of you celebrated your birthday over the Easter holidays, we've got a backlog of belated birthday shout-outs to get through this week. Starting today with Ali from Dubbo, Kale, Lachlan and Jack from Helensvale, Bo from Craigburn, Cooper from Albury, Levi and Audrey from Cannon Hill, Jack from Kempsey, Erin from Shoal Bay, Molly from Townsville, Layla from Woongarra, Indy, who's caravanning around Australia, and Nora, who's listening all the way over there in Lund in Sweden. And classroom shout-outs today go to Class 5, 6, E and D with Miss Earl and Miss Duggan at Dobroyd Point Public School. Mrs. Gash and Class 5G at Murrumburra Public School, and Mrs. Casburn's Year 3 4 class at Pitt Town Public School. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout out, or if you're after a classroom shout out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au. Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids today. We'll be back again tomorrow. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. This is a Squiz Kids podcast. Your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. Hey Squiz Kids, Amanda here, coming to you from the Australian National War Memorial. 
very early on Anzac Day. It's very dark. It's very cold here in Canberra. And there are a lot of people standing here quietly waiting for the dawn service to begin. Once it's finished, I'm going to ask Aussie kids who've attended the dawn service why they came today, what Anzac Day means to them, and how they think it was for soldiers who fought in wars. Let's have a listen. Tell me what Anzac Day means to you. Um, I think it means like recognising the hard work and like sacrifices that the soldiers had to make in World War One. Well, it's remembering all of the people who fought in the wars and gave up their lives and gave up their good health for Australia. Well, it's when um, people who grandparents have died in war come to remember them. And what does it mean to you that they died in the war? Because they were making us try to have a good world. And many of them were, like, really young, so, like... They had lot, a lot ahead of them, but they, they died, which is really sad. And I come here to remember them and also, like, do something for, to celebrate Anzac Day instead of just staying at home. If no one comes to the dawn service, then, then it'll just be forgotten and then we'll never remember how much, like, they sacrificed everything. The Anzacs went and fought for their country they gave their lives they gave they gave they basically grief to their families um so i just wanted to show a little respect and get up and go was it hard to get up early uh a bit but eventually i got there and why did you come here today uh because my dad's in the army what does he do in the army uh he's a military police officer and what does anzac day mean to you why is it an important day because my dad's been to so many wars. Yeah. How do you think all the other people here feel about that? Um, they feel a bit scared for us. Do you get scared sometimes too? Yeah. Yeah? And what do you do when you're scared? I go talk to mummy. Yeah. It's important to have your mum there to support you. Yeah. And what do you think all these people would say to your dad if they could, if they knew that he was serving and had been to scary places? That he's amazing. How do you think it was for soldiers in wars? Bad. Why? Because they got killed. And what about the people who didn't get killed? What do you think it was like for them coming home? Sad because they lost some of their friends. I know that a lot of them were wanted to go on an adventure, but so they're probably feeling good when they got there. But then when like all the fighting happened, I guess they probably felt scared. I think it would have been really scary, like thinking that you you could like not come home. Like some of the kids would never have met their dad. I, w- I would think terrifying. This one um, veteran told us a story about him and his troops um, running across um, a, like a battlefield where they were shooting and um, how if one of them got hit, he, they would, that, it would have been over because but mir- miraculously none of them got hit. Uh, and um, he said if any of one of them had got hit, they, um, they wouldn't, couldn't leave their friend behind. So, What kind of people do you think they were? Older people and brave people. A huge Squiz Kids shout out and thank you to Lily, Isaac, Thomas, George, Archie, Zach, Bloom, Elska, Lucy, Angus and Maggie for sharing your thoughts with us on this Anzac Day. Now I'm going to head inside and warm up. Over and out.